What's up everyone, it's Michael here with a brand new Skyrim build on Fudge Muppet. Today's Skyrim build is known as the Windrunner and uses the Immersive Armors mod, the Disparity mod, the Alternate Start mod and the Ordinator perk overhaul. Immersive Armors is going to give you a full set of Ranger armor and this will include the hood although you can take this off and get the same perk benefits you'd get wearing a full set of light armor due to a perk we're using called Keen Sensors. Your other gear will be the Bow Zephyr from the Dawnguard DLC, and this bow fires 30% faster than other bows. This is insanely quick and will add to the fast nature of this build. By the way, the Windrunner is built around speed, and this is pretty obvious through the gameplay on screen. You're also going to have Dwarven Arrows and also, as I said, the Disparity mod. This mod allows you to choose a class, and you're going to want to go to the mod menu and make your specialization combat, your primary attribute stamina, and your secondary attribute speed. Choosing speed gives you 10% faster movement speed, 5% faster attack speed, and a 5% chance to dodge incoming damage. You'll also be able to use this mod to choose your birth sign at the start of the game, and you're going to choose the steed sign for 100 extra points of carry capacity, but most importantly, another 10% increase in movement speed. This will of course make the Windrunner even more agile, and after you hear the abilities we get from archery using the Ordinator overhaul, you'll realize how fast this build truly can be. Your skills are archery of course, and also lighter armor. And that's it. Yep, this build only uses two skills. If you want to use something else you can, but the Windrunner is a specialist. She will be a master of two things and two things only in our footage, and this is what allows her to excel beyond other opponents she faces. Her nature is very direct and straightforward. She believes that plan B distracts from plan A. Looking at the Ordinator Overhaul, you're going to want every single perk in the Light Armor Tree except for Spell Dancer. Some of the coolest perks are Windrunner, which makes you move 15% faster in combat if wearing all Light Armor, and Tempting Fate, which makes you gain 20% movement speed if you are not blocking during an enemy's power attack, if the power attack misses. You keep this bonus until combat ends or until you are struck by a power attack, and this perk stacks. This is what will allow you to become ridiculously fast if you choose to play chicken with your opponent for a long time. Looking at the archery tree, you're going to want all the perks except for Oath Shot, as this affects melee weapons and we don't use any. Some notable perks include Clean Kill, which makes your bows do 50% more damage to a target who is at full health, and also, yes, Arrow to the Knee. This makes enemies 10% slower for 20 seconds after shooting a target within 25 feet. This also stacks. Raven Snatch is another great perk, and this makes enemies within 25 feet disarmed when shot during their power attack, and also the Long Shot perk, which makes bows deal 20% more damage for each 25 feet beyond the first 50 feet, up to 80%. The As The Wind perk makes you move 5% faster for 20 seconds after shooting a fully drawn bow in combat, and this effect also stacks. Hailstorm is a perk that makes you attack 15% faster with bows for 15 seconds after shooting a fully drawn bow, and this effect also stacks. As you can see, this build is going to be stacking up an insane amount of momentum on the battlefield. Finally, you're going to want the alternate start mod, and you'll choose the Came To Skyrim By Ship option. The Windrunner was not your ordinary high elf of the Somerset Isles. She didn't have some happy chappy family oriented upbringing, but instead was born into a group of powerful assassins. Or so she thought. This group was a splinter faction of the Dark Brotherhood who had left the shady organization to start their own group with a less traditional approach and more efficient system. The group only begun with 3 members, but after years hidden in the Somerset Isles recruiting, the group easily had 20 assassins. They were made up of different experience levels and ages, and the Windrunner, after growing up to be a young woman, while not overly experienced, was easily one of the most talented. The Windrunner was actually stolen as a newborn, hence why I say she thought she was born into the group of powerful killers. She had been taught to kill from a very young age, and during her upbringing she was sent on many missions. The Windrunner would hunt all kinds of people. She would assassinate bandits, completely innocent targets with large prices on their heads, and even leaders of other assassin groups. She had a nice amount of on-the-job practice. However, unlike most archers in the Dark Brotherhood, the Windrunner wasn't as stealthy or as patient. This was one of her biggest faults as an assassin, and she was lucky to have never been caught during any of her contracts. What often saved her was her speed. She was faster than any assassin the group had ever seen, and put all the Bosman naturals to shame. 
Her bow was an extension of her body and could be fired extremely rapidly with unnatural accuracy. It wasn't even her fast draw speed that made her so effective, but more so her rapid footwork. She could sprint, dodge, and circle around enemies without them being able to comprehend exactly what was happening. Fights involving the Windrunner were a blur. Well, at least to those she would slay. To her, the movements of combat were crystal clear, and she could never comprehend why everyone else was so slow. Her swift nature was mostly genetic after all, and she had never experienced what it felt like to move at an average pace. As I said, the Windrunner is very direct in her mindset, does what she says she will do, and never has a backup plan. It's go, 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 and win, win, win. The Wind Runner, while having killed plenty of people, always felt a bit shameful in doing so. It seemed that indoctrination could only hinder the brunt of her morality, but not stop every piece of it. The older she became, the more she would reflect and deepen her understanding of herself and the world. Eventually, when the young lady reached the age of 23, she was sent on a mission that would be her last target. She was given a name and a location, but nothing about what the target looked like or who they were. She spent weeks tracking down her target, but the clues just didn't add up. Her target was a young girl, an innocent girl who seemed very blissful. The Windrunner had always been intrigued by this emotional state and could not bring herself to commit to the kill. She had been pondering her actions deeply over the last year and now decided that this lifestyle simply was not for her. Life could leave in an instant. She knew this all too well. She had delivered this message time and time again. With no ties to material objects and no possessions of importance in the Assassin's Sanctuary, she left Somerset Isles with the bow and arrows on her back and decided to use her skills for something more than killing for money. Especially money she only got a small portion of. The Windrunner took a boat to Hammerfell and was able to sneak through the border and into the deserts. She travelled across the province, living off the land and experiencing a peaceful way of life filled with reflection, solidarity and unity with nature. This period of mental development completely changed the Windrunner. Socially, she was still an outcast, but now she felt more in tune with life. It had more value, especially the lives of innocent people. That said, however, the locals in Hammerfell had an all too recent hatred for the Thalmor, and she did not want to risk any chance of complications. She did very much look like an assassin. She was an assassin. She decides to take a ship to solitude and find a way to use her talents for something better. She wanted a journey with real connections to further develop her mind and live a more righteous life. After arriving in Skyrim, she will do the Companions and also the Dawnguard. If you want to keep your werewolf blood, you can. And also, if you wish to make this character turn evil once more, you can join the Dark Brotherhood. However, in our playthrough, we destroyed the Dark Brotherhood. The playstyle for the Windrunner is exceptionally fun, and I highly recommend that anyone watching this video who hasn't already decided to play this build at least makes it with console commands and experiences how amazing it is. This build obviously doesn't need any stealth and plays very much like a fast combat archer. You are of course extremely speedy and will end up close to your enemies, but to begin with you will want to fire arrows from afar. This is because of your archery perks which make long shots deal more damage. After using long shots, begin to close the distance shooting more arrows and dodging other ranged attacks. Take out range attacking targets first and then approach the melee targets that remain. Melee using opponents make awesome enemies for this build as you will want to toy around with them constantly dodging their power attacks with your crazy swiftness in order to make your speed even faster. This can be stacked continually so for the players who want to be stupid fast this is where the magic happens. You will of course then use your speed to zip around the battlegrounds and fire arrows like a machine gun until all your enemies are lifeless pincushions. Other tactics to use in the playstyle can also be figured out by exploring all the powers and abilities you gain from the perks I previously discussed. Bashing with your bow to knock down staggered enemies is also a great strategy. The stat spread for the Windrunner is 30% health and 70% stamina. 30% health is enough to keep you alive, especially because this build is a master at avoiding damage. 70% stamina will be incredibly fun and useful for the Windrunner, as it will allow you to slow time and zoom with your bow as you run around the battlefield at superhuman speeds. You're also going to be using this stamina to sprint on top of your already increased movement speed, and this will allow you to traverse the lands of Skyrim incredibly fast, and also can be used in battle to make distance between you and your targets. And that's about it guys, thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed watching this build, and I wish you an awesome time playing it. 
If you want to watch more Skyrim builds and also Fallout 4 builds, be sure to click the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss out on anything. The perk link for a non-ordinated character will be in the description, alongside a link to our social media pages, which you can send questions to that we'll answer on our Fudge Muppet Show podcast. Massive thanks for all your continued support, and I'll nerd out with you all again very soon.